I realize that every time I say the phrase government shutdown, some people may feel their ears beginning to bleed. They just can't hear it anymore and they don't really understand what just happened. Well, it is worth looking at the damage from the standoff in Washington because it could stretch far into the future, especially for those directly involved in the stalemate. 16 days of furloughed federal workers and closed national parks took a major toll on Americans' confidence in the people whom we've elected to lead this nation. Let's bring in on our political insiders of Fox News, John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor, and Doug Schoen, former pollster for Bill Clinton and a Fox News contributor as well. Gentlemen, good to have you here good, tonight. Good to see you, Harris. Good to see you. So the big question for some is what the heck just happened and what was the point, Doug? Well, in a word, it was politics. The Republicans tried through the Tea Party to effectively defund Obamacare, to shut the government down to achieve a policy objective. The country didn't understand why they were seeking to do that, and the president, seeking political advantage with the Democrats, played it out so we had a couple of weeks standoff that ended up with exactly what we all expected, a political solution, and as you suggested, Harris, a lot of people suffered needlessly. Yeah, when we kick the can down the road is what we've done, because we will go through this. But the Republicans marched into a box canyon. They never established a narrative for what they what was wrong with Obamacare. They go for a defunding scheme that no one thought would work. And then the administration does, Democrats do what they're doing, which is, oh, my God, we're winning on this. Let's really make it worse. And the whole huh. country was revolts at everybody, particularly the Republicans, but at the whole system. And we are at a very revolutionary moment politically. Before we move on, John, your thoughts on this? Well, Harris, I think that the Tea Party part of it uh, was a primal scream temper tantrum by them against something that they were elected to run against originally, which was Obamacare. And they're frustrated that here it is on the eve of the shutdown, that was the day that Obamacare went into effect, and they hadn't been able to stop it. And they latched on to the wrong strategy sold by Ted Cruz, this defund deal. The three of us for months here on Fox have been saying, forget the defunding, that's not going to happen. Delaying was a possible plan had they set it up months in advance, which they didn't do. You know, I want to press in a little bit sure, with what please. Doug said before we move on, because you said all the pain and everything. I remembered reading over the past few days in several different sources where people were saying, well, you know, they called back the furloughed workers on a Thursday. That means we have to work right before the weekend. Wish we could delay that till Monday. I'm not saying people didn't suffer, but there were some who perhaps didn't suffer as much as they would like for people to believe. Well, that's right. And the American people hear that and they say, that doesn't make any sense. We have to work every Friday and a lot of us have to work weekends and So evenings. make it make sense. It, it makes sense by thinking that the political class in Washington is seen by the American people to operate according to their own rules getting benefits that ordinary people don't get and there's real outrage as Pat and John were suggesting across the board because bottom line Harris this country's not working. Pat your thought? Uh, look it, and it gets worse than that you know you're right this is a privileged class that's what the American people see and you know 85 percent of the government was funded by the way what it was the people who got not the most hurt besides the furloughed workers who are some of them double dipped as you pointed out Harris which is a real problem you know, what was this was a political act by political players trying to get political points in a country's going, my God, this thing doesn't, we got problems that don't work, we have an economy that's not working, and no one is speaking to us. They're all feathering their own nest, and that's basically what's happened here. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Excuse me, John, and I'll get your thought on just a second, but I want to take a look at this real clear politics poll because it really speaks to the issue of where people are. Are we going in the right direction? You know, it's hard to get 75% of people to agree on anything other than they don't want to have their teeth cleaned at the dentist on most days. Huh. Well, who are the 17% who think we're going in the right direction? Who are they? Because we don't know any of them. And on your earlier point, because it fits into that, uh, you work with people that you don't get along with. We all have. And you work with them mm. anyway. And I think part of the revulsion that Pat referred to is this notion that these congressmen and senators and all can't and won't even talk to each other 
when we all talk to people that we don't agree with, but we have to, why won't they? Is why the, won't I, they? Well, because they're playing to their base and they have their just political politics, you know, Harris. I, I have asked this question before, Pat, and I'm curious to know what you think. Who benefits if they just can't get along and the government the shuts system, down and we're always on this precipice of crisis, crisis, crisis? As long as the system allows no choice but the players inside, one of the two sides wins and the other picks up and waits for their moment. The whole country is losing. And the numbers right now, the American people have had it with the political system as it works and the political class in ways that we have not seen in my lifetime. And quickly, what's the danger in that? The danger is that we have a dysfunctional government. We don't have a health care system that works, an educational system, and most of all, Harris, an economy that creates jobs but and growth. Why isn't that hurting in the polls, Democrats, as much as it should in, the, in what you said? And I say should because you would think if you're losing on every plane, as you right. just pointed out, it would hurt you. But the president's numbers ticked up this week. Well, they ticked up a bit from the low 40s to the mid 40s. So he's still... Nothing to brag about. Nothing to brag about. The Republicans are just plain worse. And nothing's happening. I mean... What, Doug just said pro-growth. Where is the government trying to do something to get our economy really going again? There's nothing happening. And his presidency, nothing's happening. It's just a political game, back and forth. Where's the big picture leadership for him to say, we have to get this thing moving and get jobs created. From jobs come everything. Real quickly before we go to the commercial break, Jeb Bush weighed in today, former governor of Florida. Anybody in the GOP listening to him? Well, I don't know if they listened to him, but they should have. I think you were, I, I think that what he said was, if we had, if they had pursued a narrative and made their case, as John and, and Doug and I have said, and made their case about this, about a delay, a case against the congressional exemption you mentioned, the special benefit that the Republicans claim to be against, except when they were in the back room supporting it, and 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 the IRS. They would have reached a point where the country... An alternative path and, 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 that's, and that's what I was going to say, Jeb Sorry. Bush's point, that you must have an alternative. The Republican Party stands for nothing except no, and that's ridiculous. They have a lot to offer. Yeah, a positive agenda for two things. Have their own health care plan that people can relate to. That would have helped a lot. And a government program to generate growth in the economy. But we don't hear a word anymore out of them. All it is is against this, against that. But there's more to come because what jo Doug was just saying is, you know, it's a fight, a fight, a fight. One guy stands out and waits for his next opportunity. Now it is the Republicans' opportunity. What strategy do they take? Sure. And they'll have a feather in their cap this time because Obamacare is rolling out. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Pat's expression yeah. says it all. He's not choking. Yeah. Turk has a question for our panel. What are the prospects of the Affordable Care Act being embraced and praised by a majority of voters, Doug? Harris, uh, in a word, slim and none. Bottom line, as this uh, legislation has rolled out, as Pat and I have predicted, it's gotten less and less popular. If the Republicans come up with an alternative, a simple one like interstate purchase of insurance uh, across state lines and offer something as an alternative to the health care exchanges that are not working, they can make political hay with a bill that's getting increasingly unpopular as it becomes in, in, rolled out. In, in, All right. Here. The viewers are saying slim and none is three words, but okay. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Stand yeah. corrected. Here's the problem. The, Demo the White House, the administration, is taking the same approach that the Republican leadership did after the election. Oh, if it's a technology problem. They're all running around. No, this is a substance problem going on. And people are paying more, getting less, and what they were promised they're not having. And Doug and I, as Doug pointed out, have been saying since the night it passed, we started writing about it, in the face of all the Washington experts, how the American people would eventually embrace this. That's not going to happen in this disaster if they follow. The Republicans have an opportunity to re-raise this in, late in December because the country is going to say, why us? And that's their Yeah, that's but if, their they, if they were to get a nicer face to the party, and a, positive a caring message. face, yes. once Obamacare bombs, which it's going to do. In the next two months. Yeah, so. and, and onward into 2014, the Republicans could run on that try to retake the Senate, keep the House next year on the, the line, which is we always oppose this thing. Here's yeah. our alternative, we're, we're, and we're nice. We can't be this harsh, negative uh, all the, the time. Democrats you know what's interesting? I, I'm wondering if Doug and Pat are going to be invited to dinner by any of their Democrat friends. You, know, you guys are beating up on your own party. In fact, John, they're doing the work for you. Oh, you should see us on the Republicans. Harris, let, let me put it to you this that. way. 
<laughs> the invitations so you... have been fewer and fewer. <laughs> right. But this is also a, a symptom of what's wrong. Pat and I, and certainly John, we speak for the broad middle that wants to achieve results. Tax reform, economic growth, health care that works. All right, let's fast forward now, because you sort of touched on it, the 2014 and 2016 elections. What do you see coming down the pike? Well, I see in 2014 the Republicans have put uh, the House in play. I think they'll still hold it. They had a chance to win the Senate, now more problematic. And given that the field is so divided for 2016 on the Republican side, I say the Democrats in the person of Hillary Clinton is the clear favorite. All right, I want to go to you, John. Well, I think the three of us, other than what Doug just said on, on that, is that we believe the country is fundamentally ready for a third option for president, maybe by 2016. Not a Republican, not a Democrat. Highest someone, poll findings ever today on that 60%. Right. So someone, who, someone who could embrace that and run against both parties and say, Harris, these two parties put us into the soup. Okay. They're not going to get it's us more, out. But you it's already have that. a third party, it's don't more, you? No. A kind of de facto Tea Party? Couldn't that no. work? No, no. There is, look, third parties work only if they pull from both sides. There is an 80% majority in this country against the political class in Washington believes that they are feathering their own nests at the expense of the country. That goes from the far left to the far right. What is necessary is a new paradigm of discussion, number one. But before we get to 2016, it's 2014 is the opportunity for new people to come and run. The thing about 2014, and I think right now you're right about the Democrats, but I want to tell you something. A bigger message here and, a, a, and an argument for changing the country. You get four, three or four guys elected, or women elected in the Senate, four, half a dozen in the House on a new platform, you'll blow the political system up. Yeah, and Harris, here's the thing. The people want new ideas. That's what that 74% figure said. They want new leadership. Democrats and Republicans are vulnerable across the board. Let and they me want ask somebody you, to stand up for them. Let me ask you guys them. a question, though, and I don't know if we have the numbers to put up on the screen, um, but it has to do with the favorability and the likability of the Tea Party where they are right now. I'm going to ask my team if we've got that. Those numbers have been sliding down a little bit. Now you'll see them across the board. The unfavorable number ticking up to 49% just for the month of October so far. Yeah. We're only halfway through the month. What are your thoughts so, on that? Well, here's the conundrum. They have gotten more popular some uh, among the right. No, more popular right. inside the Republican Party on the right. Mm -hmm. Less popular outside the Republican Party in the whole country. Because so, they're talking to themselves. They, they, they're in an echo chamber. They tell each other what they want to hear. They, and but, they do represent 20% of the country really believes this stuff. And we shouldn't demean it. But to win... We need, we Republicans need to take them and other people and join them together and win with a coalition. You can't There is a 70% majority of disenchanted Americans, and it's not just the Tea Party, it's independents and a lot of basically moderate Democrats who are unhappy. So who and can bring all those people together? We haven't found them yet. Well, but, but by the way, it'll start by several people running and being successful. That moment is coming. You guys are loved on Twitter, though. A few people would like to know why you didn't put your ideas in Washington. It says, political insiders had some great ideas on, on the shutdown. Why didn't they submit their ideas. You know, we speak out, <laughs> but I will tell you, Harris, there's a larger point here. It is very hard to penetrate the Democratic and Republican duopoly, of duopoly which mm. keeps individuals, fresh faces out, and fresh ideas. That's why political and, insiders and way, exist. Let me say, why a, Republican, a Republican about these two, the Democrats treat them like dirt because they dare to criticize the president at times and the Democratic Well, that's Democratic all right. I just right. want to tell you, the, the Republican leadership hates me, too, because of what, okay. that's what well, we're going to treat about you really nice on Fox yes, Report as we ease Good. our way into a commercial break. Great. And thank you, thank gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Uh, you can continue the conversation with the political insiders. I will during the commercial. Great. But you can on our website every Monday at 1030 a.m. Eastern at live.foxnews.com. On foxnews.com, our other news source here at our Fox home.